Yeah, and we're back. I feel like we should we should have some Trek versus game show music to bring the show in. We should get like <laughs> game show music. Welcome back to another episode of Trek versus Everybody. We are your hosts and your contestants and yeah, your playthings, as it were. You control <laughs> our lives, the victors. How you doing, Sam? Uh, some. How are you doing, Stuart? Also some, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully better than okay, me. I'm okay. That's all I'll say. But uh, excited to talk to you all. And, uh, you know, win or lose horrif horrifically. One of the two. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's up to the audience. They're going to get to vote and choose the winner, so. Yeah. Just saying. And I believe from the thumbnail, Stuart, they're doing a solo Star Trek stream. Is that is that right? You know, the old uh, Count Dooku from Star Trek Legacy and uh, uh, Joan Grievous from the Trek Yards moderation stream. You know, classic <laughs> Trek characters, yeah? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, clearly it's all just Star Trek. Yep. Or is it not, Stuart? I don't know. It's all randomized. We don't even know what's coming, so. Well, yes. Yeah, actually, I suppose... But he has appeared on the on the on the slides. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Jar -jar. Yeah, I saw the eyes. Like it's like the eyes of March. Oh, he is March. Ha! It's the it's the yeah. Jar Jar eyes of March versus the eyes of March. Yes, we're versus in guys. You guys decide things and bobs. Yep. I yeah, and I will start sharing. Okay, please do. All right, guys, hit that like button if you haven't already. We have 12 people here, 10 likes. That's pretty good. Hit the like button if you haven't, though. You know the routine. Also, consider joining the channel. There's a join button down there or head on over to Patreon slash Trekyards. It's another way you can help us out on a monthly basis. We really appreciate that. And any uh, assistance you can offer in that regard is very welcome. So look at the all, all the perks and cool things you can get. And, uh, yeah, consider joining. Also, don't forget that uh, these shows and the Super Chats help the show continue. Uh, it is... Uh, good support for the channel. So if you can super chat in, especially during these ones where you guys have the power, you get to vote to pick the winners. And you can also change things up on the fly for a $5 super chat. You can uh, swap things out on the go, as it were. So feel free to jump in and throw us a curveball or two. Uh, Fleet Pass Swift back. Let's kick the tires and light the fires, boys. Oh, that's, that's, that's Top Gun. Uh, they should include some Top Gun characters in here. That'd be kind of fun. Really throw Sam for a loop. Um, but yeah, uh, also check the links down below. There are links to the Teespring and the Tee Public Store. Really cool merchandise there, Trek Yards merchandise. So check it out and uh, pick yourself up some stuff. And also make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, if you're new here, uh, make sure that the subscribe button is clicked. Or if you're returning and you think you're subscribed, again, make sure the subscribe button is clicked because YouTube has a tendency of unsubscribing people. So, And also click the bell notification icon to all so you don't miss any content from us because we always have Saturday content and content during the week, lives and reviews. And when new track is on, lots of new breakdown content and reviews as well. So lots to follow and help and uh, you know enjoy as part of being here. So we don't want you to miss any of it. So do all of the things and just share the word. Anybody that you know would be interested in this kind of content. You know, let them know. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, Chuck A, member for 48 months of the rank of lieutenant. Hey, Stuart and Sam. It's always great to see your live streams. Well, thank you, Chuck. Appreciate that. It's always great to see you seeing our live streams. Uh-huh. I can flip the script. <clears throat> As Jar Jar wants to flip our brains. Yep. And then approaching <laughs> into the champion slot, perhaps. Hmm. Yes. Wants to win. I, I didn't do a pinned post on this one. I'm just getting that oh. done now, so. <clears throat> so I'm evil. All right, where's the uh, video selection? Yes! Again, randomization. You guys decide who, what wins, and subject to changes. We always encourage that to throw a curveball or fun things. Um, yeah, and you can literally throw out, you know, all the Trek, throw out all the wars, add some random, you uh -huh, know, uh -huh. uh, tiny character. You had Nib Nub, if you want him to join in, or Blelvec, or Grib Grab, or Zunktar, or 
Jared Black or just, just noises, right? The first one's real, the rest, who the hell knows, probably. Mm -hmm. me. No, I no, 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 we haven't had any droids, I don't think, show up. Do we have droids? Are we being... Well, Grievous... Uh, well, uh, Grievous oh, no, he's, he's not. Yeah. But there's, there's been no R2. I mean, I want R2. Mm. There's been no 3PO. Oh. Maybe we don't allow droids here. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jar Jar's... <laughs> Jar Jar, I guess, is saying there are droids because he's moving. He's claiming the champion slot one one bit at a time. And now he's ashamed of being caught. Hey, yeah, you guys can super battle droid, battle droid, droid. I mean, throw a droid to Kirin. I mean, that's a hell of a, an additional uh, champion, potentially. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, how do shields work with uh, uh, phasers? Don't know. We'll decide. But mm -hmm. what is the first round? Pretty hectic from the thumbnail. Yeah, let's get into it. If you want to have the chance to tweak it at your pleasure. All right, so oh. I have Amir Picard and two General ships. Grievous. Ooh. And two ships this time, yep. Uh, Stargazer and the Eclipse. Jesus. Star Destroyer. Or Super Star Destroyer. Or yep, that's the one with the beam. Whatever it is. <laughs> that's the beam up. And Commander Cockings has Vuku. Mock and Sudoku oh. on the Death Star 2 with the USS Foley. Does oh. this mean I have to do the whole thing? Is the accent? No. This is Look a terrible wolf. And looking at the counter there, it's already started. You got four yep. minutes to make any changes. Five dollars to swap any character you yep. like or anything ship. For anything. So Trek to Wars, Wars to Trek, Trek to Trek, Wars to Wars. Those are the four options. I've, <laughs> I was trying to think other funny things I can do there. Nope, that was very much yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, um, we don't know the scenario yet. We'll find that out in a minute. Um, space battling could be wedding related. For the semifinals and the final round, you guys get to know the scenario before you make your changes. But for the first couple rounds, you don't. So yes. that. An interesting little twist for you guys, because you're going to throw us twists, so we got to throw you one. Well, it's interesting. We have two super laser-based uh, uh -huh. avenues. If, you know, if it's a, if it, you know, if it's a ship-based combat, it's a pretty hectic double build, and two sort of multi-nacelled vehicles too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of. And some lots of evil people. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, wow. Yeah. The, the, the gods have decreed that we be evil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, it's fine. I mean, evil's fun. Evil uh, fun. So, just over two minutes now, guys. Any changes you guys want to swap in or swap out, please feel free. Uh, that'd be awesome. And hit the like button if you haven't already. It's easy. Anyone can do it. Glory to you and your super chats, you know. Ray Ricks, five pounds, Ooh. swap general or swap Grievous for Star Killer. Ooh, nice. Okay. Interesting. I do Interesting. like a bit of Star Killer. Again, still evil, kind of, sometimes. I mean, hey, <laughs> that's up to you guys. You, you determine the fate of our fates. Some yeah. can even say we could duel with said fates. Wow. wow. Oh, General Grievous is, is, is not appreciating General Grievous. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, Sergeant Montgomery's stuck in. Well, he was stuck in traffic. He may not be anymore. Hi. <laughs> yeah. All right, a minute 16, guys. For any more changes. Thank you, Ray Ricks, for that. And also, we've got two old bald men. Or, like, two old, like, low hair men with, with, uh, with big grey beards. Grievous and Evil Picard. Vibe wise, <laughs> quite similar. <laughs> yeah. And Vok, he's also bald. Just saying. Well, did he ever it must, be a, yeah. must be a war. Although, that that given that he's an orc, and that's uh, Scaramanga, and also Saruman, <laughs> uh, you know, part of his orc army. It makes sense! Alright, 35 seconds, guys. Any more changes? Now it's time to bring them in. After the timer stops, we'll give a couple seconds for processing and Let stuff. Him come. Races. Let him yes. come. <laughs> Sorry, Montgomery. <laughs> Dear me. And we still know the, the situation, so we can't even like predict how we're going to fight this. Oh, oh Michael Kenny, five dollars. Death Star Two okay. is a little overkill. Yeah. A Super Star Destroyer instead. 
Cool. Appreciate Again, it. Shit might not be important as far as that goes, but interesting. Interesting. And welcome to your first super chat. That is very nice of you. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Congratulations on your first super chat. We appreciate Thank you. every single one. Oh. All right, time is up, but we'll give it a few more seconds for anything to come in, uh, as is generally the way it works. Mm -hmm. So, there we go. It should be good. Superstar Destroyer. Okay, power levels are removed, but now they're very, yeah, very similar vibe. Interesting. Okay. Right. Now what it's time is... to find out our scenario. Sorry, I didn't mean to overtalk you there. No oh. more teams. It's a oh. royal. Each which character and ship emerges victorious. Ah, oh. no more. Oh, okay. So I guess you interesting. Pick, you pick your variants of people and ship, and then they fight, and then. So I'm not fighting you anymore, Stuart. No. Oh goodness. Okay, I'm rooting for you to win then, Stuart, because I'm not fighting anymore. Okay. Cool. Gosh. God, God, God. How do you guys know taking away a second Death Star? Because I don't think Foley will fight a second Death Star well. Or probably the Executor. Hmm. Okay, so which ship is getting which person on your side, Stuart? I don't know. It's the scenario, so my timer starts. Oh, okay. That's good. That's They're going to be fighting each other, I assume, in my own slot. That's so. I mean, but I was gonna... Okay, yeah. go! All right, so we got Picard, Mir Picard, on the Stargazer, because, of course. And uh, Starkiller is on the Eclipse, because the, it's their respective universes. They, they've come through a portal, and they, they run into each other. Um, <clears throat> which character ship emerges victorious? Well, I mean, the Eclipse fires up this big cannon and, like, fires at the Stargazer. Stargazer gazer dodges out of the way as... I'm sure it might be able to. So it would see that thing powering up. Uh, does some fancy maneuvering. Again, Newtonian physics and all that. Uh, kind of does spiraling around the eclipse, just firing phasers the entire time, just like slicing it like a like a spiral. <laughs> um, and firing photon torpedoes the whole time as well. Meanwhile, all the turbo lasers on the eclipse are firing at this as it goes around. Uh, taking pock shots at it, not well. Yeah, they are affecting the shields somewhat. Uh, the shields are going down. However, as the as the stargazer is doing its spiral around the eclipse, it is like slicing right through it, essentially with the phasers, and the photon torpedoes are just the piece de resistance as it starts to like break apart. And it looks like a spiral. You know, when you when you peel an apple with one of those spiral cutters, and you got the spiral of like apple. Yeah, that's what it's going to look like at the end. Starkiller, however, uses the force and pulls the ship back together. It's still damaged, but it's holding together, and it just builds up with this force power. And also, lightning strikes out from the entire ship body, slashes the Stargazer a few times. The Stargazer goes spinning off, lights flickering, warp cells. Core shut down, magnetic bottles, no good. We got an antimatter explosion. <coughs> Stargazer is gone. The eclipse wins, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> you end on the eclipse wins, kinda. Well, <laughs> strong the, end. The ship's, the strong ship's end. still destroyed, but it was pulled together by him, so he just leaves in a shuttle. There you go. A Tiberium shuttle. What's that? Tiberium shuttle. I have no idea. No. Okay, cool. I will. I will respect your universal choices. So picture this. Tyler Vuch has killed Foley and is now sitting in the captain's chair. The crew dead around him. He is confident in his success in his greater empire ambitions and he is chilling out at the edge of Federation space and all of a sudden, wha-bam! The ex uh, executor comes out of hyperspace and it's so big that he, he thinks oh, a ship has appeared. But it's, just, it's appeared so far away it looks like a normal size and it keeps getting closer. And it's now filled up every single part of the view screen, and it's not even range yet. We get this e epic shot from below of, of the, just the ship, and it's like the size of one building on the executor. It's that big. Um, the Foley's like, huh. And Tyler Vox just says fire upward phasers, and they're so tiny in re respect, even if they're hitting through the executor's you know, shielding. The, the holes are so small to the size that they're just like hitting, oh, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jeffrey's you can be like, whatever tubes. And then Dooku just sits there going, <laughs> so he lets his little finger, presses one button, 
And you see this great reverse shot of all the different cannons coming out the bottom, turning. And that shot continues for like 30 seconds, and you clear like at least 500 cannons. And cuts to Vok and, and Dooku saying, Well, you are doomed. He's like, Wash, Wash, who are you, old man? And he presses fire, and you see this just tirade of. <laughs> and it's so much more like a blanket of fire. And the Foley's shield bubble, like, it's not, you know, normally in battles, like, parts of the bubble get hit, but not everything. It's just so much fire, the entire bottom is just pure blue of the shield bubble and pure green. And it's like the immovable object, whatever. And Vox like, ah, ah. but he keeps firing, and, and Vox like, what the hell is happening? And within about 30 seconds, with literally a thousand bolts having fired, the Foley just shields flare. And then every bolt goes through the Foley, because they're so big, and it just rips apart in one giant sh shatter effect. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, guys, go vote. You got four minutes on the timer. I do read out my poll as well. To vote, and. Uh... As you can see, there's the poll to vote. Who wins? Stuart, star killing Picard. And Sam Kalo. It was important to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would just love to see a Starfleet ship doing that, the spiral around another ship, though, just firing phasers constantly. Like, oh, doing the Orville. What was that called? Uh, Hugging the donkey. Hugging the donkey, yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure. I would say, why not? But I mean, they can't necessarily do that. But hey, why not? I mean, certainly Defiant could. Yeah, but it has pulse phasers, unfortunately. Yeah, I know the, uh, the uh, Renegade ship, Icarus was meant to be able to do that. He had phaser, which is in every single angle, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so what do you think of my, my rather simple, but visually, hopefully, bold? It was great. I just I was wondering why Vok was on my ship. He's not even in the same universe as me. Hmm, interesting. Weird. <laughs> Yeah. I want him off my bridge. Well, like you're dead, so I don't think you want anything. Um, Although maybe you could be a force ghost, because Dooku's arrived. Yeah. You could you could haunt Vok. Sure. Uh, but it, 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 the, you know, Foe's not a big ship in the grand scheme of Trek, therefore it's so interesting to like think of the perspective of the sizing. Mm. Incomparable, you know. Um, and suddenly I was picturing the shots. Yeah. It's like a, it'd be great... I don't know how you do it necessarily, but to, to build out like the Enterprise J, uh, J and be able to put a ship next to the, the, the inner buildings because, of course, they're giant. Like The perspective is so broken that like you could have a shot where it flies through the buildings of the J, like Connie, for example. It's that big, right? So this would be very, very similar. Well, we have 10 votes with just over two minutes left. I think mm -hmm. 20 votes if possible. I would love that as well. Six, with 16 people here. But if you haven't voted... Please vote. Mm -hmm. You can turn the tide, as it were. So yeah, let vote. us know. I mean, you guys, votes. you guys have the power. And obviously, you'll put people through the next round. I mean, either way, you win, Stuart, because the Foley. Well, I guess Foley had Vok on it. But next round, if the Foley gets through, you could put Stuart on the Foley. There you go. You know, you could do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 20 people here now. Awesome. So go vote in the poll, mm -hmm. guys. Who do you think should win that round? Uh, if you're just joining us, vote anyway. Pick your favorite. <laughs> well, indeed. I'd like to get to as many votes as possible. We have 11 currently, now 12. So hit that like, hit that uh, vote button. Yeah, if you don't even know who we are, we just joined in. Vote anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, uh, Sylvia, she is down here. Uh... So she just came down. Good to see you, Sylvia. Yes. All right, vote. 12 votes and only 50-50 right now. With us, just over a minute to go, you guys can turn the tide. Mm -hmm. Vote. 22 of you here. And if it is not a... Uh, if it's 50-50, which is rare, but it does happen, then the first Super Chat determines the winner. And we cannot move on until someone votes with their Super Chat. So, so help us by not needing that, by voting right now for free. Mm -hmm. in the chat. Mm -hmm. yeah, literally it's free it takes, it takes a button right it just takes a button it's that easy yeah just go vote right on the poll guys whoever is your favorite I would love to uh, story or their the persona <laughs> but I mean obviously we, people can come back I'd love to get Starkiller in later because he's such a powerful and interesting mm -hmm. character uh, mm -hmm. you, can, you can sort of write whatever you want for him in terms of pew pew force ability you can, you can do it probably mm -hmm. right at the power I just wish that second game wasn't so. It's like, why can there Short. be. Well, yeah. 
So why can there be nine Fast and Furious films and only two Star Killer based Epic Jedi film uh, games? Because they got to fit into the canon, the, t- the timeline. I mean, they could cry sleeping for two hundred years and come into the future. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So the voting is done, everybody. I'm gonna end the poll. Looks like I won that one barely mm. with fourteen votes in total, but fifty-seven percent for me. And uh, it was 50-50 for a while. Sam was leading for a while. That was exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just need more votes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and that's I mean, your vote. Your vote made a difference there. Yeah. Very nice. Well done. Yes. Do you like a bit of Star Killer? So now we're on to round two. Oh, I guess. And again, seven people can vote for Discovery. I get it. Yeah. And again, you guys have the power. You get to vote and choose the winner, but you also get to super chat in and throw us curveballs and change out characters yes. and ships. So, and we do encourage daft Star Wars characters too, because there are some silly ones, but not like dogs and cats and pets. Best to have real characters. Generally speaking, yeah. Generally speaking, depends on the scenario, but sometimes we don't even know the scenario. So, indeed, very nice. Well done. Next, uh, well, ne- next batch of people, and then we'll give you guys a chance to say no to that, <laughs> or yes. Oh, so for round two, okay. I've got. Bashikin, Dr. Bashir and Anakin with an 8472 Bioship and the Executor again. I was swapped out by somebody in the Super Chat last time. So. But you could oh, have look. two randoms in a row though, in fairness. Look, and you got Bar2D2. R2D2 and Barkley and uh, on the Torquemada. Tur- 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 and the Lambda Shuttle. So... <laughs> And that answers my question if there are droids and R2-D2 my favorite, so that's awesome. I mean, Torkan Damada was our uh, ship with a chap that is a Defiant launcher. Yeah. And there's two bays in the back, so therefore we're coming to Defiant. And th- uh, just over three minutes left, guys. Make any mm-hmm. changes now. Mm-hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Three minutes to make changes. Yes, you slightly outpower me in this round, I'll be honest. Depends uh, on the scenario. Ships might not matter well, again. Well, no, but the chosen one... Um, super engineer, genius doctor, a, 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 a Borg cube destroyer, almost powerful ships in Star Wars versus a droid, a crazy droid. guy. You shut your face. A defiant launcher and a shuttle. So you have an extensively more ability here. Although Barclay maybe could, could like talk Anakin to submission, possibly, possibly. But, you know. mm-hmm. I, it might be me. Barkley can also like get super smart and modify R2D2 to be like a killer droid or something. Goodness. Ray Ricks, five pounds, change the Lambda shuttle for the Ven- Venator. Ooh. Or a Venator. The Venator? I don't know. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, minutes. Ray Ricks. Just over two minutes, guys. More changes if you guys want to throw in there we go fleet pot five dollars swap the executor with the jedi starfighter <laughs> cool. okay i mean i can sure be happy mm-hmm. and there's a fly one of those hmm. Hmm. again you guys don't know the scenario for this one so we're not sure if that's going to make a difference or not but hmm. it could be interesting all right hmm. what a classic shuttle of uh, the lambda though Oh, it's amazing. Just yeah. a definitive, uh, nice looking piece. Mm-hmm. So, a minute 30 left, guys, to make any changes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't emphasize enough how much power you guys have here. <laughs> yeah. You could, you could do crazy things. Mm-hmm. 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 That's right. <sighs> <sighs> If if you want to, Michael, you can. You got a minute left, and that'd be a that'd be a big 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 difference. But again, based on the scenario, it might not even matter. <laughs> but you know, buy a ship if it's being can take on a Borg cube with full shields. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, how, how much? You know, I I would assume the Star would have low ish shields because it just takes so much power to probably shield the whole thing. Like its bases have shields, but I think the planet part hasn't. Because you know you're not meant to you're not meant to get to it. Like, how would you shield something that giant? Uh, I don't think well, they did. Sh- it was shielded. 
because they had to come out of hyperspace. Ah, but the base was shielded. Yeah. Because I assume they they could have hyperspaced like 500 miles that way, but then you got to fly around. The, like there's a whole thing, right? With that, uh, if it's meant to be time crucial, they had obviously just right in there. Uh, uh, I think Pat was in five dollars Bashir for Borg Seven of Nine. Ooh. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. The vengeance of the. Uh... Oh, oh my God! New graphics have showed up. Well, the new thing. So once they're changed, so somebody else doesn't lose their super chat. Yeah. Anyway, oh. locked, locked in. Goodness. All right, and all right, time is up. Yeah. Give it a minute for the change. There we go. Seven of nine and Anakin. Nice, nice. All right. Ah, things are happening. So, what is the scenario, Mister Brett, computer sir? Round two. Your team and fleet are confronted uh, with the mirror universe versions of themselves. Defeat the doppelgangers. Okay. Interesting. You get to go first. I do. Too. Okay. Hmm. I'll see what comes up with that then. Okay, so obviously, obviously, Good Barkley and this fleet are having a great time around the planet, hanging out, easy. And Mira Barkley appears. He is full of confidence, but much dumber. That's his reversal. And R2-D2 is painted yellow, because Mira, and has all every single one of his little slots has a weapon in it. So he's a literally a horrible thing. And also he's a bomb as well. He's also a nuclear weapon, but like a space super nuke. Uh, Talk Armand and Venator, of course, Mirror Universe versions. So they, yeah, they, uh, they, they they portal in, and Barkley thinks, ha 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 ha, you fools. He targets the weapons, he starts firing, the, the good guys start firing back, but the bad guys always have more weapons on their, on their disposal. He then beams R2-D2 onto the bridge of Torkar and Amada, who starts firing out poison gas, and he murders the entire crew with poison gas. And um, I don't know if he's programmed to, but evil R2 um, wheezes and hisses la laughing with every death. So pretty visceral, um, and while Reg, Evil Reg, is, is doing the, the you know, t taking the fire of the fleet, R2 is just literally zipping through the ship, murdering everybody it sees to the nth degree. It's really gruesome, um, and laughing. So you know, imagine those sort of shots. Barkley decides he is too bored of space combat, so he pulls, uh, he beams to to where R2 is, and, and he holds his hand out, and R2 throws out two lightsabers because of course his lightsabers in his chassis. And evil Barkley grabs them and starts lightsabering through walls because he thinks the best way of causing damage is to blow out into space because it's really mean. So he causes damage and it has R2 uh, destroy the outside wall once it gets clear and vents those people into space. After he kills the first ship, he puts on a little space suit and grabs hold of R2, evil R2's uh, body and goes to the Venator and does the exact same thing again. And good R2, just so nice, he can't do much to stop it. And Will Barkley is so smart but so unconfident and he just can't deal with it because he's been mind gamed by evil uh, Barkley. It's bad times, everyone. Mm. Bad times, Jip. Real bad times. Indeedly doodly. Cool. All right. Throw me two minutes on the clock, Brett, sir. All right. So we've got Mirror Universe Anakin and Mirror Universe Seven of Nine. And, and because they're in the universe, Anakin's really nice and sweet. He's a nice guy. He was, a, he was an evil kid. He pulled the wings off of flies and stuff. But now that he's older, he's become much nicer and has like a, you know, a love for everything. Because why not? Also, Mirror Universe, 709 Borg, she's also, you know, cooperation is awesome. You will not say no to us because you will cooperate with us because we're so nice we'll give you whatever you want anyway <laughs> they run into their actual selves which of course both are kind of evil and uh <laughs> um the good uh seven of nine is on the 8472 bio ship because they're friends with the species 8472 uh they um i would assume that the the counterparts also have the same ship for some reason did the the regular seven of nine was, you know, trying to trying to 
um, assimilate the species 8472 bioship. Everybody aboard was killed somehow. Anyway, they're, they're face to face. And <laughs> they, um, good Anakin takes his Jedi starfighter over to the other bioship and docks. I assume there's some kind of shuttle bay. That That's a good question, actually. Uh, gets in there and starts talking to the evil seven of nine. Well, the normal seven of nine. Anyway, <sighs> regardless. Um, <laughs> now the force. Uh, no, I'm not going to go there. Yeah, I, I, I really don't have anything for this one. They, they, they offer love and flowers and rainbows. And of course, that that uh, is doesn't make any sense. Resistance is futile. They end up getting both assimilated and uh, turned into the everybody gets assimilated into the collective. There you go. That's all I got. I, I had nothing on that one. Thought I'd have a good spin on it with the, the good side, but no. So what you're saying is it's a good day for Alice Creek, this one. Yeah, pretty much. Good for Alice Creek. She deserves a good day. She deserves a win, you know, after all those not wins. Yeah. All right, so put four minutes on. There we go. Vote. Uh, so Stuart, Anakin of Nine, and Sam, R2, D, Broccoli. Yeah. I like being silly with these. They are fun. Yeah, yeah. I had nothing with mine, and it's fair that I lose. But go vote anyway, guys. It's four, four votes right now. We got 21 people. Mm -hmm. We want to see 20 votes if we can. Mm -hmm. So you got just over three minutes. Let's do it. And like we say, vote now if ever hold your bladder. Exactly. So we always, I mean, that should be a t-shirt. The how you say that, Stuart. It's, I mean, I'm sorry I don't want to bring it up again, but you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tricky mm -hmm. one because fighting yourself on ships that you don't really have access to fully. It was an interesting, yeah, I, I predict, predicament to myself as well in that one. Uh, mm. It's actually hard on thought as well. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of having two starships with a lot of these. Well, it's a new thing we're trying, apparently. Yeah, well, I want to randomize it, so sometimes it's two ships, sometimes it's one ship. Mm. That'd be kind of nice, too. Um, but yeah. So... Two minutes, 45 seconds to vote. We have seven votes. 21 of you here. By the way, hit like if you haven't. Like right now. And, uh, like, yeah, right now. 24. It should be out, going up right now. Do it. Do it. No. Okay. No. No. But go vote as well in the poll and choose your winner. You have total Eight control, votes. guys. Nine votes. Come on. You can do it. The higher the votes, the better. And there are 20 of you here, so. I, it would be interesting to, like, to our stalker audience, see where they are all watching. That not all twenty can click a button. You know? <laughs> yeah. Even in the bathroom. If they listen to it in their car, you might you shouldn't be able to really. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. That's of well, I suppose. Although I wonder, can Siri like that YouTube video? Is no. that no? Okay. Mirex Corner, Ninekin, Bashikin doesn't work without Bashir. And as I, I answered you in the chat there. Eric. But yeah, we don't change the names mm -hmm. even after the characters are swapped because we like to see where we came from at the end after all the all of the said and done. So we've been so far. Do -ba -do -do -do. Plus, Brett does a great job with the names that we just yeah, yeah. ruin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's just yeah. It, it's the only yeah. It's the only legacy factor. Like, oh, what 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 happened? Why why are we okay? How how do we get here? I don't know. I don't really know. I like that. And That's Brett, fun. if you want to do that, he says, I think I just figured out a quick hacky way to replace the sh one of the ships with a third character uh, if you uh, want to uh. get wild. That might be interesting. That might be interesting. If you want to get wild. Gosh, we're, are we in a wild mood today? Are we, are we rowdy? Are we... I mean, I'm uh, not. Okay. <laughs> Less than a minute, guys. Ooh. Go vote on the poll. It's literally that easy. You just got to press the button. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Press the button. Doo -doo. That was easy. Well, it was two buttons technically, I suppose. I mean, you decide on a winner, then press the button. Well, I difficult. Yeah, mirror selves. Mm. Mirror selves are tricky because they 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 are, you know, I went with the, the the joke about Barker being confident but stupid, but probably, <laughs> probably more similar than not. Yeah. But, you know, you want to have the fun of. Yeah. 
I just pictured Anakin wearing all white, and being all friendly to everybody, and really nice to children, and yeah. loving sand. He lives in yeah. a sand castle. Now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he takes uh, he takes his not to, he takes his not not dead children to work you know to the beach. That's his favorite favorite location. Yeah, I mean, I do feel sad for you know like they've had the what ifs in Marvel. It'd be really great to see what if Star Wars. I would certainly watch. Yeah. But they have it. It's on Netflix. It's called. Um, How's it called? There's two seasons of it. Um, <clears throat> huh. I can't remember what it's called though. Okay. Not necessarily like, I mean, it is what it is because it's yeah. Anyway. But obviously, as soon as you start saying, "Oh, we'll hire in Hayden," it's like the cost of that is going to be so much higher than it could be. All right. So time has been oh. up and. So- Ooh, I won with 57 again. Jesus 40 Christ. as well. There you go, Stuart. Um, sweet. Thank you, guys. Pew, pew. Didn't I like... didn't do it. My story sucked compared to his. But uh, They decide. Everybody was picturing good 7 and 9 and good Anakin, so... Mm. Yeah, imagine a good ball. Visions. Variant. Thank you, Ray Ricks. Yeah, it's called Visions. Star Wars Visions. I mean, like a proper what if, like a proper. So I felt that would be more famous than if it was a proper what if. Okay, I can guarantee that hasn't got Mark Hamill and Samuel Jackson, you know, Hayden. Yeah, I would love to see a yeah. forty-five minute oh. Hayden. What if he didn't turn evil? Story. Daniel Grievous, there's a series Star Trek Legends comic called Infinites. You should try Sam, which is a what if. Yeah, but I don't want to comic it. I want to. I want, as I'm saying, I want to hear the actors portray and live it. That's the. Uh, as I mean, I want to. Uh, Hayden didn't get a chance to play the good side. Um, mm-hmm. And certainly, having read the books, you know, read the books of you know uh, Luke going evil and such, it's very fun. Can't, can't you use your imagination. Yeah, but that's what the character's for. Ah. Mm-hmm. All right, so round three is a ray of light. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! This is fucking brilliant. EMH and Ray on a cleave ship. Oh, good God! And a sovereign against the commander's team. Well, not again. Well, he is his team. It's cricket. Tira, Norris, and Wicket with a tie bomber and the Franklin. All right, so four minutes on the clock, guys. Time for you to put in your super chats to make your changes. Any characters you'd like to swap out or ships, feel free. And again, you've got an insanely more OP fighting force there. You're the most powerful Jedi ever made, Stuart, Ray. <laughs> ever. Uh huh. We've seen the films, so you can do anything. But you got the most powerful Wicket. I do. The most powerful Ewok ever created. Um, oh, Jesus. I mean, possibly Abjub. Was that what the song was called? No. What was it called? Abnub. Yubnub. Yubnub, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like that, I mean, that song, you know, that, if that doesn't. Um, if that doesn't uh, uh, melt, your, melt your heart of whoever we're fighting, you know. General Grievous, evil Luke with a Joker laugh. <laughs> oh, that's so epic. <clears throat> All right, two minutes, 40 seconds, guys. Any changes you'd like to make? Now is the time. Dun, dun, dun. Again, we will know the scenario in just a moment here. Ray Ricks, though, throws in five pounds. Change wicket for Sirat Emwi. Sure. No idea who that is. Oh, there's now a new logo changing. Okay, that's, that looks like easy. see that's that's helpful. That's what that way people don't say that. Swap it looks like the wicket is uh is is doing a quick custom change though. Censored. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, shirt Emwe is the the blind guy from Rogue One, who I've never known oh. his name. He's awesome. Yeah, uh, I am one with the Force. The Force is with me. He he's called a ch- Force cheat, which is. He's not a Jedi, but we'll give him half the ability set, sort of, kind of, just so he can live until he dies. Mm. Just weird characters. <laughs> I like him. I, I like him, but he's weird. <laughs> you know. Because uh, I can invent anything with him, but also I don't really want to, because I feel like he should be limited with his ability set. Hmm. Now, I watched a behind-the-scenes thing with Gareth Edwards. Everett? Edwards? <laughs> yeah, he's a yeah interesting director. He's got a lot of good, a lot of good thoughts. Smart cookie, smart cookie. 
Yes. Oh. All right. Just over a minute left, guys. Any more changes? Keep in mind that Wicket is changing, so if you want to... So if you want to put him a 2-2, like two -two, he's kind of changing something else, so you can't do it. Exactly, yeah. That's... Put him in a thong. Put him in a, a G-string. Jockstrap? I don't know. Put some pasties on him. Yeah. All right, here comes the change. Boom, baby. There he is, and he's locked. You can't change him. Screw you changes, all. Though. You haven't got the power anymore. Yes. No, no. I like this locked and changing thing, by the way, Brett. Good idea. All right. 26 seconds left, everybody. After four General Grievous, $5. Swap Ray for Salacious Crumb, a better written character with more development. In a... <laughs> I have a little salacious crumb. I should go get him. Oh, I'm not gonna do that. <clears throat> wow. Can't wait to see the scenario, though. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Again, could be absolutely anything. Yep. Very likely is anything. <laughs> All right, time is up, guys. We'll give a few more seconds for anything to trickle in via processing or whatever. But, yeah, interesting. So Ray is now changing, so she's censored as well. Changing into dark Ray. Just tease the audience, though, and leave again. Oh, the cleave ship. Oh, my goodness. And I go first this time. I just don't like it. All right, let's let's changes in. Let's see the scenario. Da, da, da. Yeah, I always forget that character's name too. Sharut and Wayne. I mean, they just not. Say, I just say I say blind guy. <laughs> oh, well, they're, they're they're not memorable in the sense they're just so big, broad, and diverse. It's yeah. Too big. You know. But also have a bad time remembering names anyway. I was, I was not gonna, you know, you yeah. know they die, so <laughs> the importance of remembering them was also not as important. The Klingon cleavage ship. I um, wish. The, do you? The cleavage ship itself actually has a lot of power behind it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see the scenario. <laughs> yep. A film crew is making a documentary of your adventures. Which Ooh. crew has had the most exciting mission? Oh. Wow. Okay. That's uh, tremendous. Yeah, 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 it is. That's, that's... Brett, did you invent all these like on the spot? These are, these are classy. That's a good one. Yeah. All right, throw up a timer for me. All right, so we got the EMH with his little pet salacious crumb who we found on a strange world many years ago they're best friends salacious crumb laughs at all of his jokes because of course he does it's salacious crumb uh he was they were serving on the sovereign class uh when he when he found him and they've been serving on that ship for many a year they uh they stumbled across a a derelict cleave ship you know from that klingon war that apparently happened it's 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 intact um and uh to, to become the ultimate power in the, in the Federation fleet, they actually take the cleave ship and they weld it, or fuse it to the bottom of the Sovereign, so that now they can just slice through ships if they need to. you got the speed and power of the, uh, the Sovereign, but like with slicing capabilities now. Because, of course... Anyway, film crew shows up, asks about their adventures. They, they recount the tale of them finding each other, and they actually really love each other. You know, these two, you know, anyway. <laughs> also, finding the cleave ship, I mean, that's uh, amazing. This is a war that isn't in any of the Federation da data banks, but apparently there were these Klingon cleave ships with, like, str and the, the the information from the computer banks is all weird because Klingons look strange. It's, it's odd. They've obviously found some kind of weird anomaly, something that crossed dimensions, which is fine. But using this new ship, they have managed to... Um, 
get in the, the Guinness Books of, Book of Universal Records for slicing the largest cake ever made. It was made by a, a bakery uh, of near Riza that uh, created a cake the size of a moon. And uh, t- just to cut, moon. to cut, exactly, to cut that cake, they used the cleave ship and did it with style. <laughs> Sovereign class, you know, slicing right through it. And uh, yay, their adventures are not yet over. They got more records to break. All right. I think I think we've worked. I think we know. We know. We got it. You, you got it straight. Well done. I'm excited for you to, to read my whole letter as well. Thanks, Brett. All right. Okay. So these fine people fought the power, fought the empires that they were. So a lot of terrorist stories. But you know what? They both won. So therefore, freedom fighter stories. And the Franklin, you know, really fight the power kind of ship. It, it, you know, there's Jar Jar. Um, it crashed and then became this Pavel ship. Um, and then at some point in their adventure, many adventures to it, because of course they haven't, you know, they're, they're secret people, right? They're, they're amazing. So the Franklin was a stock footage image. But really, they added a back bit, you know, there's a hole for it, where the TIE bomber can be. So it's, it's two ships in one. And the documentary crew meets and says, oh my God, we do the Franklin. And they say, we modified it to make trouble. We want to rebel. Hashtag Genoso, RIP. And then Kira's like, oh, this one time I was on Cardassia and Churrit and I, um, we went down to this planet. I had two phasers. He had two sticks, and we stared at some Cardassians. And then I started shooting, and then they started shooting at me, and I dodged because you know skill. And he just stood there, and then he walked to the Cardassians and hit their neck ridges with the sticks, and they all collapsed as if they were makeup. It was very confusing. Um, maybe maybe this, maybe it was a documentary of a TV show. Who knows? Uh, and they won, and they, they took out, and it was like, what happened? The force, I guess, this thing called the force worked with this guy, and it, it worked. Um, and this tie bomber fell from the sky, and this guy, that's how they got it. And he, he jumped up. He's the he didn't use the use the not force to jump into it at the last minute and grab it and start partying. Amazing. Um, now that of course is what you see on TV because the film crew have embellished it. What really happened is that they walked in, shot some guys, stole some stuff, and left. But they thought that was boring because they're not superheroes or EMH people. They're just they're people. So the 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 video, the big version, and then. Um, the name the avatar guy director he ends up buying the rights to the movie and they make it it's called transformers 9 um it diverts from the source a little bit but at the end of the day the premiere happens uh Keanu is there she gets selfies it's a great day and the franklin uh, has a motorbike on it they use sometimes <laughs> i need to get popcorn when we do this so every time you're telling a story i can just be ch- munching on popcorn <laughs> so a, lot, lot, a lot of thoughts <laughs> All right, so go vote in the poll, guys. Let's see what this one says. Who won? Stuart? Cleaving crumb. <laughs> and crumbs, because there was a cake. There was crumbs left behind. Uh, and uh, also, Stuart, <laughs> uh, team fight the power. Well, fuck you. Oh, no. So either way, vote for either one. Unless you want to change it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He's going to change the poll, so if you've just voted, go vote 24. again when you have the correct names. See, I was both listening to you and also trying to do the poll. Yeah. Well, there you go. So, we'll need another four minute timer once the new poll gets up, Brett, I think. We're only 30 seconds down, it's fine. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. You got your timer. Good. All right. So, go vote now. Yes. If you just voted, vote again for the correct one. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. Let us know. Yeah, it's amazing how much Jar Jar gotta... keeps showing up. It's creepy. Evil Jar Jar. <clears throat> I was confused by the Tie Bomber thing falling out of the sky. I must well, have missed something there. Oh, uh, yeah. I was also confused. Okay. <laughs> And then I then retconned it into a fictional, you know, the documentaries tend to lie. And that, was, that was my tremendous get out of jail free. Uh, Perfect. Speaking of get out of jail free, what do you think of the new Alien trailer that was released today? Or a teaser, but... For Alien Romulus? Yeah. I've seen it yet. It's very alien, which, in fairness, you want out of an alien. Um, I said this about Alien Covenant, is that at the last, like, four minutes, it's just an alien film, but it's good. Like, mm-hmm. I don't mind... It's like Predator Prey. Predator Prey is just another Predator film. 
just different place. I'm happy to see another alien stalks people through things as long as there's a few little little additions. Um, mm -hmm. Like the formula worked so well, um, you know, absolutely fine. The sets look phenomenal. Uh, looked looked simple, and the fact is, if you make it cheaper, it's a horror film. Guess what? We'll make more money at the box office. It's going to be a, pay, pay, a success, which is good for the vibe. So I, I thought it looked absolutely fine in a good way. Cool. <laughs> Two minutes and 23 seconds left, guys, to vote. We have yes. 11 votes. We'd like more than that if possible. Yeah. So. Come on, guys. Always no, more. No, and hit like, like yeah, I said that already. And you, <laughs> like he's drinking these shots popping up everywhere. Um, anyway, yes, go vote um, and hit like if you haven't already. You've got two minutes left. Yes. This is the way. Da -ba -da -da -ba. Oh, uh, oh, I packed him away. Put back away. Uh, uh, oh. Speaking of, yeah, I've still got the nickel. So, someone's probably start collecting things. Uh, this is a, well, Marie's not watching, so is she. So, have you seen these before? No. I so, don't like Funko Pops, so. Well, neither do I, but these are. Tiny ones, yeah. Because I don't want to pay like what twenty bucks for one, but paying fifteen for three. I kind of like that. And you can put me desk. Yeah. Um, we originally found Disney ones, which is why I got them for me as a present. And then we found a Harry Potter, and I bought the whole set for her. Um, they they vary in quality. I assume that the big ones are shrunk down, but they vary in quality. And then we found a Toy Story that I bought her. So why not? And then I found these for myself. I was like, well, yeah, it's pretty good. So is it? It's Quill, Mandalorian, and Jawa. Jawa? Yeah. yeah, and then there's a four to set, four to collect, four batches, and then you get a. Uh, I guess it's only as like I say, a free bo oh, a special bonus one. Um, mm. I really wanted Luke, like proper Jedi Luke. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I just thought it was actually quite. I mean, and they're so small. I thought you could put it somewhere. Um, so that would be like a present for me from her slash from me, because we can share the opening thing. So I've got like. Seven bat, seven sets for her to open, you know. Because things if you buy presents for the other half throughout the year, then when it comes to like a birthday, ha ha, <laughs> we're not breaking the bank or Christmas when you bought everyone everyone's presents already. Indeed. All right, so twenty seconds left, guys. Go vote. We have twelve votes. Like a few more, if possible. Nineteen of you here. Hit that like button. Yeah, we're gonna cut the big Funko. That's too big. Go vote in the poll. They're amazing, like, but once you start, you just got to do. Something. Yeah, I just hate how deformed they are. Like loaves of bread for heads. And, Wait, know, yeah. So. yeah. Some of them work. Yeah. Some of them don't. Exactly. I've got like a original Voltron, the Lions Voltron. Mm. Looks pretty cool. Pretty cool, but. All right, ending the poll. Time is up. Who won? Sam won. Sixty-six <gasps> percent. Thanks, guy. Huzzah! Nice. Uh, I liked. I did like how you put the cleave ship on the E. I really visualised that. That was a very good. Me too. Because you remember that shot from uh, Insurrection of it flying over. Add the yep. blade. That's it. Like that's actually a really good fan film visual. Like a, they stole an E, stole a, yeah. put a blade on it. It's that's what I was visualising with the cake cutting as well. It's just... Yeah. No, it's a really good. Idea. <laughs> Which I can say that now because I won. So. <laughs> Oh, I you don't talk me up during the voting. I, guess, I no, see how it goes. I did. I did. Okay. Well, I'll shit, totally I'll shit all over yours when we're, people are voting. Okay. okay. I know. I, I get it. I get it. It's fine. Okay. All we'll right. Let's see what the last batches. And I'm very keen for your super chat. The final changes. We have some more variety at the last uh, for the finals. All right. So <laughs> round four. We've got BB, BB Iker. BB8 and Riker uh, with the Enterprise B and an A Wing. Very against even. against Team Natulu, Newt Gunray and Kamulu, we run with a Romulan Warbird and a Corellian Corvette. Awesome! Again, don't know the scenario for the semifinals and the finals. You guys will see the scenario before you make changes. But right now, you get to swap out any character or ship you want for five dollars super chat. I love the disparity of power levels we have. Flagship fighter. Flagship freighter. Like, there's not even, you know what I mean, a remote uh, closeness. That's a great A-Wing shot as well. Yeah. And you said you've yeah. got droids, and you got two droids, or well, we got yeah, two droids exactly. in back to back. Jar Jar was telling us, and when I said that, he was like, I'm going to put oh, the Jordan's frame. Oh, like... gone. Oh, I guess he's not that evil. Oh, phew. 
I was getting worried. He's like Fleetpool, you know, never fear. You should always <laughs> fear when he's here. Um, so we're safe if there's no Jar Jar. I'm happy to hear that. So yeah, vote now, swap now. Um, I mean, what's nice about the Critian Corvette, which that's not a Critian Corvette, that's a that's a freighter. I just realized Critian Corvette's the blockade runner. Yes. That's not a Critian yes. Corvette. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. Uh, titles are on ships, which you... So what, what, what do you want to have there, Brett? Corvette or... Uh, cause that's, a, that's a very simple freighter. I, I like the design, though. Um, I would assume the picture is the one he was wanting. Maybe just labeled it wrong. Yes. That's a problem with track guys. You can no ships. Um, Ooh, Ray, Ray Rex, 10 pounds. Ooh. Swap Newt Gunray for Darth Jar Jar. Oh! oh. And Kamulu for uh, Calarian Beg. But Stuart, is that legal? <laughs> oh yes, just like the blockade. That's great, yeah. And again, Newt, Newt's just doing his little flash. <laughs> He's changing his bikini top. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Come on, I should better find out what it is. It's the GR seventy five medium transport. Nice. Uh, Sturm von Alk, five dollars. Swap the Warbird for the old truck they you found bitch. floating in space. <laughs> I saw a really good YouTube video that was talking about that specific truck. Um, I think it was a channel called Truck Yards or something. Oh, but that, that's uh, who started first? Because Truck Yards and Track Yards. Because if we started first, we should sue them because it sounds very similar. Uh, we started first. I, I have looked into this, but how many episodes um, do they have? Because we've got like four thousand. I I don't know how many they have, but I know they're they're kind of dumb hicks. So it's kind of mean to like oh. give them give them crap for stealing our name. So we'll just let it slide. It's and, fine. And they, won't, they, they won't get they won't get they won't get popular. And are there even four thousand trucks? Because there are definitely four thousand things the track yards boys can talk about. Uh, I'm sorry, Sam, why do you fear me? No, no, we, we, we celebrate you. We fear Jar Jar. And that's why we have no fear, because you're here. Yes. Even though evil Jar Jar shows up. Yes. We're fine. We pause here. Yes. <laughs> but does anyone, does anyone change my Corvette? Because my entire team gets thrown out of the wheel lock. <laughs> that, doesn't, that doesn't happen. So now, because now we have a very clear visual of that's very useful. They don't change my credit and corvette and anything else or you could change it to a credit card <laughs> or <laughs> well you only got well, 10 more seconds and then a few seconds afterwards to make your changes dun, dun, dun. all right three two one <clears throat> oh fleet i got in five dollars swap bb8 for commander cody oh nice Interesting. Kind of looking forward to using BB-8 in whatever scenario we ran into, but Fleet Pod has just been like pushing my buttons lately. Oh no, Fleet Pod just realised. What? You could have given him Queen Bitch Whore of the Galaxy from yesterday. No, I wouldn't go including those ones. Sorry. General Grievous, that's not a Corvette. That's if you already figured that out, General Grievous. But thanks for the tip. We're ahead of you, because that's our job. <laughs> but thank you. We do appreciate the My help. My brain was working. Working. Yes. Working. Speaking of working, Stuart, my next fan film comes out on Saturday. You've now seen the, 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 the press review cut. What do you think? It's pretty good. I like it. Well, it's great to revisit TS9 again and see some extra, extra cool ships in the background. Caught those, did you? Oh, yeah. Like I got them, so I included them. Mm -hmm. As you should. As I should. That's that, the point. And that's our first inclusion of the merchantman, which we made for Farragut. And I was like, "Oh, perfect!" It's like just because whoever built that. But once you've got it, it's just it's such a perfect, you know, flying around cargo ship. Although you realise, because the merchantman, of course, is Star Trek Three. Its spire, pointy thing at the bottom, its tail thing. Like, you never see it from the bottom in the film, like at an angle. So you only ever think of the top and the bottom. So doing like this it's like oh there's a it's, it's you know it's weird because you never see it that way surprise me um so yeah do look at do look for that on saturday it's a ds9 love fest 
Um, do you think you like Keeley any more or later? Uh, more later? Do you, do you like Keeley more or less? Or, or, or you know, after another Keeley in a DS9 love fest to me says orgy for some reason. And so, yeah, look forward to that guy on Saturday, guys. But the character, Stuart, uh, do you feel, how, how do you feel about now with another, another tale of her backstory? How did she get more tanned? <laughs> Isn't it winter over there? Yeah. She looks more tanned. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, she's 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 good. It's always great to see her on screen. So mm-hmm. I find that everyone has a certain appreciation. They like older Keely, mid Keely, or young Keely because they're all so different that you know um, they're different people, right? Yeah, That's not a fan of old Keely, honestly. Right? Younger one for me, I think. To uh, to to stern. Yeah, too grizzled and just grumpy. Mm. Captain A, yeah. Yeah, captains are all dicks. Well, the furniture was facing a Tholian dickhead, so. I know something about the Tholians. Jesus. <laughs> we were actually talking about the Tholians last night on my live, uh, because yeah. we mentioned I mentioned our uh, Tholian episode, which was our one-year anniversary. So we watched part of it, and it's like, I can't believe that was our one-year anniversary. That doesn't seem that long ago, but my God. Interesting, some interesting stuff in that video. So, and it's it's so interesting that I certainly think once we like that first year felt like it went on forever. We, oh, we got to an anniversary, and then when you're nine yeah. and a half years in, <laughs> we've missed like eight anniversaries because it's just like, yeah. oh yeah, the time just goes. It's, uh... <sighs> Jesus Christ, that a, does a lot of change. Oh my God, a critical vet showed up. So that's correct. Cur- Credium Beck. Yeah, that's uh, what's his name that plays George. Good it's Darth funny. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good Darth Jada picture as well. Cool. All right, so our scenario for this went round is the First Order has been defeated. Throw a celebration that the galaxy will never forget. I like it. Cool. Cool. All right, and. Um, I think you're first. No, I think you're first. I was first for the first one. Okay. We just did the third one, so you're first. Okay. <laughs> that whole truck. Goodness. Thank 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 you all for the truck. Um uh, Well, I mean all good celebrations need um to be on Naboo, of course. They've got giant beautiful cities and giant purple balls, which you know, they make special, you know, originally the Pearl Balls are energy weapons, right? But on celebration days, they make tiny ones that are green and they get you really freaking high on life. They're just drinks. Uh, so they go to Naboo um, and the critical ver- hyperspace is in, of course, in, in Rise of Skywalker because it lands. So it lands in it, puts these big, like, um, you know how in um, uh, episode seven, there's the place with all those banners. All the, so the, the Corinthian Corvette has banners across the entire thing of all the different races and species, and you know, tremendous. And then our uh, heroes land, and like the pilot starts at seven, it's what is that six or five? And then suddenly, and then party starts, and uh, all these different bo- 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 boom boxes, you know, music, dunch, dunch, dunch. the Corvette blasts out music, and also the old truck zoom, goes by, and they're like, this truck, and, and the guy's like, Shut up, you. No evil! Shut up, you. And they go to the party, and they hang out, and it's, it's all Gungungs, Gungungs and Jedi. Turns out that, you know, that Order 66, <laughs> it, it only, it, there's, every everyone lived. Like, like not everyone, but I mean, like, they never got anybody. There's, like, four different planets of Jedi. It's all good. So they all hang out, Critical Corvette, boom boxes, with the Jar Jar green goose stuff. And then, of course, other planets, they get the message, get to the party. You know, since, since Hyperspace is basically instant in Star Wars, Every hour, new ships come in. It's bigger and bigger. Cut to that great open field in in Phantom Menace, and that is now other ships are landing. All ships different boom box things, music, um, and then you just go from one area to another, drinking, eating their food. Um, the, the thing you had last round, the creature that you had on your heart, shoulder, you know, those things are eaten, as you know in Star Wars. Those things are everywhere being eaten. Jar Jar's really evil, um, and he massacres a whole group of people because he's a real dick, and then the other guy has to kill him. And that's why the party's memorable because it's both celebration and also the start of the next great massacre. Wow. All right. Throw up a timer on the clock. Follow Start, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
place. The First Order has been defeated. Riker, of course, is very happy about this because this, this is in the Star Trek universe. He decides we're going to have a huge celebration on Ryza. He's got like frequent flyer miles on Ryza. So he goes there with Commander Cody. On, and, uh, you know, they want to they put on a show. So they, they, they pull the Enterprise B through time with the, the, the energy, the Nexus ribbon, energy ribbon in tow. It's like flying across the sky. And then you got the A-wings, like in the end of Return of the Jedi, setting off fireworks in the sky as well. There's a lot of a party vibe going on. Plus, it's Ryza. Commander Cody shows up with his little holograph thing and, like, looks up, breaks or hacks into the, uh, the, the, the restaurant and looks up Order 66. And it is, in fact, chili and grilled cheese. So everybody gets chili and grilled cheese because it's Order 66. For some reason, that's an important number for the celebration. So you've got parties going on on Ryza, Horgons everywhere. Uh, <laughs> and in the sky are fireworks from A-Wings and like the energy ribbon keeps going back and forth because it keeps following the Enterprise B. It's just, just the way it is. Riker's having a good time. He's wearing just a bathing suit. There's an, there's an image for you. Commander Cody is also just wearing a bathing suit and his helmet because why not? It's got to be fun. People are coming in from all over the place to celebrate this defeat of the First Order, this this invasive species, if you would, that have made its way into the Star Trek universe. They're, they're, they've been defeated. It's fine now. But there's there's a huge party going on. And the A-Wings, I mean, they're, they're the fireworks makers. I'm just saying. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, there's a, there's a huge party on Ryza, thanks to Riker. He used all of his frequent flyer miles. Didn't have to pay a goddamn cent. So he cashed them all in at once. And uh, I'm sure he'll get more. So there's no real loss there. But everybody has a good time. All right. Read out the read out the poll. Right. Four minutes on the clock for voting. And who wins? Sam with Darth, Darth Jar Jar as Lord. Or Stuart, Commander Riker. <laughs> That's it. That's boring. Why well, is Commander Cody and Riker? Commander Riker. Ah, I was mixed. The, I was mixed the names, Stuart. What would you want you from me? Should have put Commander Riser, like Riser. Oh. Rise. But right, things rise. Yeah, and rise. Been, no, no, been, never mind. Clever, simple. So go vote in the poll, guys. Eighteen of you here. As many people as can, please vote. You got three minutes and thirty-five seconds. V -v -v vote, everybody. V -v -v vote. I okay. You talk so fast sometimes. You said the old truck went speeding by. And yes. Missed what happened? What was that part? It took people to the party. Oh, okay. Okay. That's it. Gotcha. Gotcha. I mean, the, the party got really crowded very quickly. Um, but I did forget Jar Jar was evil until the last three seconds. Therefore, he murdered every, well, a large chunk of people. <laughs> General Grievous. It's Ryza. Aren't you sure it's not Order 69, Captain? Ah, that's good. I should have thought of that. Al Sturm says, too bad Sam didn't say how Trucker Stew was all, all, uh, driving on truck. Trucker Stew? Trucker <laughs> Stew. Oh, he's on Truck Yards. Haven't you watched it? I've seen the one episode. A bit odd. And they got a, the, the other guy's, uh, I think, Mechanic Sammy. So yeah, Sam and Stew no, and see, Truck that's, Yards. That's very strange. I mean, it's kind of sketchy. I said earlier that we should sue them, but I can't remember their real names because the chance of them starting after us with them called Truck Yards... Your name is Stuart. Stuart is a devi deviation of that. And Sammy, I think you said. Like, that feels like they're making a mockery of, of us or stole us. Mm. Maybe they'll be on TikTok or something. Um, well, can we, can we like go Google they... um, them and see how many, how many followers they have? They appear kind of stupid, so... Like I said, I don't want to punish them too much. They can't think of their own ideas. Our, well, yeah, they stole our names. Hmm. 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 Let me go look. Sleepaw says I would have done Commander Cocker. Well, but that's you are me. The bow. All right, nine votes. Can we get a few? Oh. That's half of the people that's here. We have eighteen people here. Let's try to get at least to twelve votes, perhaps. Um, let's just go vote, guys. Do vote. You've got it's minute forty-four, and the ah. <laughs> charger is hanging upside down. Ah. I feel oh, that's oh, just oh. evil Jar Jar. That's not Darth Jar Jar. Because Darth Jar Jar's eyes don't glow red. I don't think. Maybe they do. I don't know. <clears throat> they just Nine votes. Soul. Come on. We need more people to vote. we got 20 people in here. Go vote on the poll, guys. Who won this round? Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so Truck Yard just posted a new image on their social media. 
three hours ago, which seems an odd coincidence as well. So hmm. we're just talking about them. Uh, I can load. Uh, should mm. load. Oh, yeah. 55 seconds to vote, guys. We're still stuck at nine votes. No, I mean... Less, less than half of you have voted. The vote in the poll, you get to choose the winner. This is your job. See, if I was looking at that, I would think they were amateur at best. Who has truck yards? <coughs> I mean, that, t that side truck <laughs> doesn't look it works. Oh my goodness. I mean, I mean, you said they were stupid, and that doesn't look particularly good. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I said, I, yeah. I mean, if you guys are curious, go look up truck truck yards on uh, YouTube and see if you can find the episode I saw. I was talking about that 1934, 32 Ford pickup truck. I can't remember. Anyway. Oi. But if they've got more followers than us, maybe we should invite them to the show and we can confront them! The thieves! Dun, dun, dun. Time is up for voting. We'll end the poll. And Sam's Darth. Oh. Jar Jar is Lord wins with 54% oh. early. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much. I thought my Ryzen party was better, but that's okay. You guys get to say who wins. So, it looks like they did a, an Indiegogo earlier in the year, and they have a poster for the project. Okay, it's kind of cool. I guess not English. Who's Rasselin Arnor Gur and Orlin Antiwa Transen Yawal? Truck yards with two Y and two R's. Like, who are these idiots? They can't even spell unless they're like Danish. They're Danish. Sounds Danish. Uh, what do you think? Would you, would you watch that that truck yard movie? Mm, yes, it looks epic. <laughs> All hey. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice segue into our semifinals. All right, now we get to hey. this time. You guys get to see the scenario before you get to make changes. So. Courage. I'm gonna say screw us over there, but make it more fun. <laughs> Sam won by one vote. Ooh. And the Corillian Corvette one is the unchanged picture. That might be updated. Yeah, the, the teams are all... The current people. Yeah. Let me see what the... Let me just see what the, uh, the next... Working. Oh, this thing is. <clears throat> There's some pretty mm, uh, diverse options in the uh, pool of what could happen, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Having a little bit of a computer glitch, it seems, so don't worry, it'll get sorted out, and we'll get the proper teams on here before we launch into the next one. Well, we've got, we've got the computer overclocked, so, you know, it takes a bit of a... Yeah. <laughs> overclocked and underpaid, yep. Overclocked and underpaid. I can just hear him laughing in the background right now evil computer laugh okay so round five i've got Pacrevis, mirror picard and star killer with the stargazer and the eclipse uh, Commander Calkins has Bashkin, 709, and Anakin on the A472 Bioship or the Jedi Starfighter. And the, the scenario this time is you've been invited to a traditional Beta Zoid wedding. <laughs> Which of your teams more confidently adheres to tradition? Holy hell. And there Four are many ways you can take this. Yep. Um, I encourage them all. <laughs> Ships don't necessarily play a part in this. I mean, they can, depend on the story that we go with, but... Yeah. So make your changes now, guys. Three minutes and 43 seconds. Go. BS yes, feels like we certainly have... The people will be ideal here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you guys have all the power. Betazoid Weddings. I don't know if you knew, but they're naked. So, you know. Have some fun with that with the characters if you guys choose to. Hmm. 
And hit the like button if you haven't already. Just saying. <clears throat> Three minutes left. Give us all those weird changes. Truckyards movie. What the fuck? It's just weird. I wonder if we have a movie I poster. Feel, I feel violated. Fleet Paw throws in ten dollars to change Picard to Admiral Sheer Fucking Hubris, Admiral Clancy, and Starkiller to Admiral I smoke thirty five packs of cigarettes a day. Oh, she's from um, Beyond. The the, the old, old know, lady admiral from Star Trek Beyond. Don't know if that makes sense. Ray Rex five pounds change Anakin for Zora Bliss. Okay. General Grievous, five dollars. Swap Star Killer for Palpatine. You're welcome. Uh shit. I don't know how the computer wants to handle that because Star Killer's already been swapped. Oh, up to you, Stuart. You've made this evolution of the formula. All right, I'm going to say use his Palpatine to swap out seven of nine. Ha! There we go. That's going to be great for one of us. <laughs> Everything's changing. This will be interesting. Admiral Clancy. Mm. And I don't, I don't know the admiral's name from Star Trek Beyond, but I know the actress. She's a big deal in the Expanse. So I met her at elevator once. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah, she was at a convention. I hadn't seen Expanse, but obviously I like her from beyond and a few things. We were going up to David's room to look at his lightweight files before we did a panel the next day. He's a big Expanse fan, I believe. Get an elevator, and obviously it's the same hotel they stay in, so she got the elevator <laughs> with a handler. I'm like, hello. She's like, oh, hello. And I have like a, a 10 seconds of small talk, but she's, you know, chipper and happy, and it sounds exactly as you think in real life. Um, and she's much smaller than you think. Um, she's pretty damn petite, uh, I think yeah. you call. Not diminutive at all, and yet. Um, so that was kind of fun. I mean, I never did that many celebrities, but that was one of them. There was one in Vegas that we... was waiting for an elevator at the same time we were. I have a vague memory of something in Vegas, but it doesn't remember too much. Mm. Uh. Nothing's ringing a bell. On that one. No, indeed. Okay, so am I am I Betazoid wedding in my ships? I said I'm not. I'd be very cramped or deadly. Yeah. It's up to you. That could be an orbit of the planet that the Betazoid romance. So you can do whatever you need. I love the got ships. Some of the two smaller ships in Trek, and you've got two. In, in, well, you know, and you've got two giant ships. Goodness. <coughs> oh, just push. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's, now it must be first. I went first last time. Yes. Okie dokie. Gotta wait for the changes to take implement though first. Uh, 20 people here, 33 likes, if you haven't like, hit the like button, like to get to 35 if possible, two more, so. Yeah, no point in doing the naked, poll. Yeah. Naked helps in a Jedi Starfighter, nice. <clears throat> Damn me. Admiral 35 packs of cigarettes a day is Admiral Paris? Huh? Okay. I always make fun of the lady from Beyond for sounding like she smokes 35 packs of cigarettes a day, but okay. I guess Admiral Paris then for mine. Brett. <clears throat> Don't know why, where 35 packs of cigarettes a day came from, but. Hmm. You've been confidently adheres to tradition. Fair. You've been you've been invited working, but also fair. 
Oh, from, yeah, from beyond. Her name was Admiral Paris. Really? Okay, well, there you go. So it is the right lady I'm thinking of, just for some reason. <laughs> we didn't actually have her in our uh, Admiral's list yesterday. She's a, like a one seed Admiral. And she was a reshoot as well, I recall. They said. Oh, and Ray Ricks, she's actually a Commodore. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yes. Um, Commodore Paris, okay. So I remember she was like, it was like three months of the film came out. I said, oh, quick reshoots for a new scene with this great actress that everyone likes who's in the expanse. And I was like, oh, cool. And she's just, I guess they didn't have exposition done properly. So just, oh, I'll just go backwards and do an early scene. And, and it was good. It's a good scene. Um, Perfect. Oh, Jesus. Look at my team. Oh, my God. Okay. And I go first. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, so they arrive on the planet where the, uh, the wedding's taking place, and, and they, they meet each other. They've known each other for quite a few years. They've, you know, served together or whatever. Um, Admiral Clancy is, of course, totally into the Betazoid tradition of uh, doing the weddings naked. Uh, Commodore Paris is not, and she, she kind of refuses to attend in her, you know, birthday suit. So Admiral Clancy is, of course, the sheer fucking hubris. You've been invited to this wedding you must honor the betazoid tradition and go naked and commodore paris is like well she's got a lot of diplomatic skills especially when you watch the expanse so i mean she she tries to to negotiate not having to go naked uh but admiral clancy's not hearing it she's i mean the sheer fucking hubris to, to even suggest to go to, that's just disrespectful to, to the people that invited you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't know where to go with this. Um, so, uh, yeah. The eclipse shows up and destroys the planet. Boom. Problem solved. There's no wedding. Um, <laughs> uh, the stargazer is just like, okay, well, uh, we're out of here then. Peace. Because uh, yeah, they can't deal with the eclipse. Not this time. They... they you know, if they had a better captain like Mir Universe Picard, they could have like spiraled around it and stuff. But you know, it's not going to happen this time. So yeah, the planet's destroyed all because of the sheer fucking hubris of you know, not uh, all the time they wasted trying to get her uh, Commodore Paris naked for the for the party. If the, if the wedding would have been done and over with, and then the, the, everybody would have survived. But unfortunately, I don't know. <laughs> there you go. Boom. Five seconds left. Shh. Well, okay then. Right. <laughs> ah, you meant to give me a three, two, one. Not reset it. You did give you a three, two, one. Oh, I was looking at your. Th oh, no. Oh. There was like one. Yeah, reset the timer. As, as he was finishing, Brad, I got to release the, the the lead in. Goodness, goodness, golly. Okay, give it a two-minute timer, and I will start my thing. You start the two-minute... There you go. Perfect. Okay, so, of course, very famous uh, event to go to is a wedding, and Palpatine going, you know, obviously, obviously he's king, emperor of the universe. It's all good. So he rocks up on a bio ship because, of course, he likes to go in style, and he strips down. Turns out, most of the time, he's naked on his cloak anyway because it's so big and whatever. So he's pretty comfortable. So he walks in... Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful ceremony. Um, uh, Jarek, Sal, and Blemfenfong get married. Lovely wedding. He sits down going, Yes, excellent. You will make a beautiful brat. You know, just classic stuff. And then everyone's naked. Um, lots of boobs and butt. It's great. And uh, Zori uh, lands a starfighter and she gets out. And somehow not naked. It's very strange. And she walks up um, stealthily. Kind of like a, like a, like a lemur. Like, ah, stealth. Up to the wedding, they're in the reception now, and Palpatine's talking to some senators. And I mean, yes, you will build my Death Star 3, because I'm sure Death Star 2 will be destroyed. So let's start on 3 right now. Good sir, we haven't started 1 it. Yes, all 3, and then 4 and 5, like Avatar, will make all at the same time. Fuck it, I'll do all of them. And Zori walks up, um, and somehow she blends in, um, because everyone associates her with metal. So, yeah, she's naked, uh, fine. And they think, that, you know, she blends in well. And she walks up to Palpatine, and she taps on the, the shoulder. Turns out, who are you? And she's like, I am death. Pulls out a blaster, shoots him in the head. 
Palpatine goes down. Turns out that his cloak was part of his energy like field. Like part of his force power was his cloak, it was a Sith artifact. Um, and, and this is all a big trap to get him to murder him in cold blood. Turns out none of the people at the wedding are, are know each other. They're not really married. They are technically they get an annulment because, you know, it was a fake wedding. But it was a real wedding, but it was a fake wedding. And then they'll have a real party. Uh, they put the Palpatine on, on like an ice sculpture and they celebrate him dying finally. And they blow up the ship and the universe is saved thanks to Zori and her cold blood murder. Good day. Very good. I like it. All right, so go vote. You got four minutes on the clock, guys, to vote for the winner of this one. And the choices are Sam, Unlimited Bliss, and Stuart, Sheer Freaking Expanse. Nice. Very good, very good. Yes, I actually want to have a twist for that one. Did I, did I, did I sell you on the... Do you expect to reveal the twist? No. I had that going in. That's why I lulled you in false insecurity. So so normal, right? So normal. Nah, murder. Just, just murder. <laughs> That's the twist. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yours was yours. Yours was a lot. Yeah, a lot, lot of crazy. A lot of crazy. Well, I just mine was done in a minute. I just needed to stretch it out. I incorporated my ships, though. I mean, hey. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> totally unrelated thing happening, but hey, that's fine. <clears throat> Anywho, go vote. Three minutes, ten seconds for voting. Ten votes currently with a 50-50 split on the vote. Oof. So your vote can make the difference and tip, turn the tide, as it were. Pick your favorite. Orlandian Productions, I've come late. I don't know, no. At least you're here. Although that is, that is quite late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get scene. to see the next semifinal and then the final round. So, But now round. you... Can throw your power right at the wall, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can make a difference in the voting as well with eleven votes currently, but twenty-three people here. You got two minutes and thirty seconds left. I'm just saying. Vote now. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. I thought you were going to have uh, Bliss come in and. Take off everything but the helmet, because don't even know. Like she didn't even show anything. Yeah, I don't know. Just take the helmet off for the, the movie for at least one scene, but no. Famous actress too. I know, I know. Just a poorly thought out character and a poorly thought out scene. Great environment though. The, the set they built was simple but effective. Thanks, bro. Yeah. 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 I just that weird. Weird. Some cool stuff in it though. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you could re-edit all three films of the sequel trilogy into just one better film. Oh, yeah. If there's 100%. enough good material to make one good film. I think you could, yeah. yeah. One good one, at least. Oh, I can't imagine having all... Yeah, we, 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 I'll see what happened. You have all three le- legacies die in the same movie. Wow. Frick. <clears throat> but I'd kill, I'd kill Poppins at the Poppins moment. Hmm. You know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or have Jar Jar come in. Oh, General pulled over to vote. Good man! As you all should. <laughs> Every six minutes, stop your car, pull over to vote. <laughs> oh, we have 13 votes currently with a minute left, so Guys. if anybody wants to vote, now's the time. The other uh, nine Do of it. you would have stopped driving. Do it. Do it. The sheer fucking hubris. Just do it. The sheer fucking hubris. I don't care what you do. Just vote. <laughs> Trying to be ah, coming our Paris. Good, no, it's good. That was good. <clears throat> At least fourteen votes. votes now. Come on. One more. Thirty seconds. Come on. One, One more. Surely. Surely. All this power, and you guys just don't want to use it. Shame. Did you watch uh, Airplane in the Cinema? Don't call me Shirley. No. Ah, I'd love to see like how much actual laughter be in the cinema for that. Such a funny film. Like Mm -hmm. actual reaction. It's like drinking problem. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, it's like um, Psycho. I know that the old the old joke people ran at the cinema was too scary. It's like, but like, but you know, interesting social thing to see. 
Oh. The vote is over. Sam has won with 66%. Order 66 with Palpatine. I see the yeah. trend. Hmm. Conspiracy. You rigged that that poll result. I see how it is. Yes. For glory Whoa. and the empire, yes. I shall march in the semi-finals and win, yes. And Fleet Paws Vader. No! Yes. It's okay. It's okay, Fleet Paws. All right. So now we're going into round six. Yes. Yes. All right. So we got Kieran Arise and Mway, Tie Bomber Franklin. Sam has Darth Jar Jar and a Kelleran bag, old truck, and a Corellian Corvette. And the scenario is a thousand TIE fighters are attacking your team. Defeat them or escape with your lives. Dun, dun, dun. Or both. Defeat them and escape with your life, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, so four minutes on the clock. You guys can make changes to any characters or ships. You see the scenario. You know what's going on. So throw the up the timer, Brett. Do it. Hmm. All right. Damn. Tick, that tock, truck tick, will really help tock. me in this. I mean, I assume the Curly and Corvette has a tractor beam. You could, like, tractor beam the truck and swing it like a club of sorts. Swat and TIE fighters. I also like how we've continuously had either Super Star Destroyers or Death Stars. The one time to fight fighters, we have fighters. A sense, like, you know, shitty little... <laughs> Yeah. Any any of the other things were amazing. This is the shit we. <laughs> yep. Goodness. I mean, it's, well, it doesn't have to be all. So if you guys want to throw us curveballs or help us out, you can do so. Either one. Uh, you have three minutes left. Throw in your choices for swapping things out. And uh, also, don't forget that a ten dollars super chat. You can add your own scenario. The ridiculousness of a thousand TIE fighters attacking. You can add something of your own there, and uh, we will use that and put it in the randomizer so it can be used in the future as well. So don't forget that choice. Hmm. And 38 likes. That's pretty awesome. Can we get two more likes though to get to 40? Ray Ricks, five pounds. Change the truck for the USS Defiant. There you go. Ooh. ooh that's actually not a very helpful one, though. Forward facing only, it will take. Well, he didn't say which Defiant. It could be the, the <laughs> TOS one. That's true. Ray, please clarify. <laughs> the one from Enemir Darkly. Oh, that's saying. such a good point. Yeah, no. Ray, got to be technical, man. Track yards after all. You don't have to super chat in. Just no, no, no. In the, in the regular chat. That's actually really funny, Stuart. Well done. Just over two minutes left, guys. And uh, yeah, Beam any muffins. more changes? Beam muffins are good. It's true, there's so many things you could change for that. Mm -hmm. Anything could change. I mean, you know. I would assume he means the USS Defiant from Deep Space Nine. You know what he meant. We don't, though. There's been a few. No, so. and, 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 he he, he's going to. I'm going to say it's the one from Intermare Darkly. He doesn't so. mean that, though. But that's oh. what I'm assuming. Oh, my God. Fleet Pod, $20. The TIE Bomber to DS9. <laughs> Uh, Franklin from R2, the Earth Space Dock from Picard Season 3. Shit. Uh, M-Way to Admiral Jellico. And the Carillion Corvette to the Enterprise D. Mic drop. Damn. Damn, Fleet Fa. This is All right, a, that's a lot of changes. Is this final or semi-final? Poor, this is semi-final. Okay. Uh, for the poor, overtaxed computer. But thank you, Fleet Fa. <laughs> that's great. We got to see a lot of cha changing now because. Oh, what's funny is that you now swapped from being a joke battle to a we can win battle. So how do you make a real we can win battle funny? Mm. That'd be funny necessarily. Just most of them are so ridiculous because we can't win that it has to be funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's a serious one. 
Hmm. Well, thank you, Fleet Paw, for that. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Thirty seconds left, guys. Any more changes? We should see some changing, so that you guys know what's changing on there. So you don't feel like you wasted your super chats. Uh, there we go. And the curly and Corvette as well, I believe. Yes. I was looking forward to using him, actually, Mway. But Ray Ricks, five pounds. Change Kira for Darth Revan. Everything is changing. I don't like change. All right, there we go. That's the end of the changes, guys. Although, yeah, a lot, a lot of Jedi in this now. Yes. Defeat them or escape. Well, wow. We can certainly pew pew. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And curses to you, Flipa. Like I said, I was looking forward to using Mway and his force connectivity, but I will. Did Flipa indeed? That's one of the curveballs that you guys can. Uh huh. You have things planned out and then you screw it up. Uh huh. So, that was some TIE Fighters, nice. Oh, yeah, what do you think of the new uh, Star Wars Acolyte trailer? Two trailers in the same two days. Yeah, not really impressed, honestly. Well, I'm going to watch it, but it doesn't have the feel that I was hoping it would have. Mm. I know it's like 100 years before the prequels. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. Um,. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. Matthew Lebner, ten dollars. Cure to Admiral Archer. Death. Jar Jar to Han Solo. Uh, you came in way after the timer was done, though, Matthew. Um, but if we want to change it, sure. What the hell? Up to you. Plus, you, you Matthew. I feel like you wasted that because Kira was already changing, which means it would be locked. Uh, we can maybe use it for the fi final. Yes. And apply them immediately for the final. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, Ray Rick says, doesn't the Defiant have beam phasers as well? The mirror one did. Yep, it has an aft and aft up phaser emitter. Not that it's on the ship physically, um, it can just fire if the angle's right because then you can't tell it's not able to fire. <laughs> <clears throat> so Matthew Levner will make your changes at the on the final before we start the final. Um, and we'll lock them in, I guess, so nobody can change them, if you'd like. Uh, yeah, the people don't have to be skilled to operate them that's not does it doesn't apply into the the scenario fleet pass so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't think you guys did. fully understand the rules because there are no rules <laughs> the people can do whatever we want them to and that's the amazing thing they can either not be familiar with the equipment or they can be very familiar with it depends how we want our scenario to go also we don't know how it's going to be it's going so yeah you know are we going to make it? It has to be entertaining and clever. Yeah. Who the hell knows, right? It could Indeed. be. And I say don't. I've certainly stopped prepping stuff in my head and just like, ah, oh, let's go. For it. That's why I get things like a sudden reversal. And you get to go first this time as well. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, okay, although we haven't seen everything... Oh, oh, things are changing! Things are happening! Uh, what was, what does Anakin say? He says, It's working! It's working! Right! Okay! Uh, no, Kira should be Darth Revan. Yes. You got a Jedi. And also the Franklin should also be Earth Space Dock from Picard. Yes. So more changes still incoming, guys. Uh, should I have a pit pop go, or should I wait? I don't know. Brett, remember, I can hear you in my ear if I need to, so let me know what's going on. 
Should you just start a timer and do it while he's talking? I don't know. I'm happy to okay. wait. Yeah, he's ready to go, so just he'll oh, throw up the timer. different to can go. <laughs> yeah, he'll throw up the timer and you can go. Okay. Go. Alright, so of course, 1,000 tire fellows, tremendous opponent. Uh, Darth Jar Jar on the Defiant and Han Solo's on the Enterprise D, both uh, facing off this giant swarm of people. They close, their wines get closer. Darth Jar Jar stands. He raises one finger and a second finger. He does this, and they all explode. He then sits back down again, and then looks into the abyss, pulls the force into a vortex, and opens up a time hole. He then travels through the Defiant and the Enterprise D into your game, Stuart, and he finds Darth Revan and Jellico. He, he, he phases himself onto the bridge of Deep Space Nine, and he stabs Revan, your Revan, with a lightsaber, killing him and taking his mask of the trophy, put it on his, on his, um, on his uh, side like a predator. Han Solo then walks up Jellico, shoots him in the side. He's an old man. He can't dodge. Then uh, Darth Jar Jar then phases one of the Enterprise D and starts shooting the S9 in the power core because it's right there exposed. And of course, Darth Jar Jar then phases the weapons through your shield so it would blow up DS9. And then a space dock, um, the Enterprise D uh, is fine. The Defiant, then because it's so big, he phases that into the middle of your Earth space dock and he quantums your Earth space dock and phases out. In return to my own reality, my own scenario again, he then takes the so bag. We killed your scenario. Darth Jar Jar then goes back and he pulls his other hand and he pulls it together and he reforms all of the TIE Fighters into, do you ever play that Matrix game, Path of Neo? Into that giant agent at the end. And he phases him into the end of that game. So it turns out that game is not actually Neo, it's giant TIE Fighter pieces. And he watches as another reality faces Neo and punches Neo in the face to kill him. And phases down he and grabs... Uh, he goes in you know, major revolution. He grabs Neo by the throat and tries to choke him. But then Neo realizes that he's in a fake reality, and he puts his hand in Jar Jar's belly and takes out his heart, squeezes it. Jar Jar dies. Everything resets. It was all a dream. Sam wakes up. Huzzah! Mm. It's all a dream. Try and follow that in your brain. <laughs> Yeah, I gave up like t <laughs> 20 seconds in when you switched over to my side for some reason. I was like, what the fuck is well, happening? Well, I was done with mine, so. <laughs> it's off charge, I'm adding to everyone. <laughs> Alright, throw me a two minute timer. Alright, so we got Archer on Earth Space Dock. He, uh, you know, from Picard, he went to the future and is going to tour and, you know. Apparently he's right beside Deep Space Nine for some reason, where Jellico is in, in, in charge. A thousand TIE fighters come out of this weird vortex anomaly and uh, start attacking, and they're like, oh no, whatever shall we do? Twin ion engine fighters with no shields. Hmm. Let's not even raise our shields. Fire everything. A thousand TIE fighters gone. Jellico's like, hey, I'm going to beam over to Earth Space Dock because Archer's over there. Did you hear he came through a time portal? Thanks to this guy named Daniels, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to beam over there and we're going to hang out and talk about this incursion into our space. We'll get to some of this debris together and find out what these ships are. So they go, he beams over and they, they go to the lounge and it's a real honor meeting you, Admiral Archer. Um, so it's amazing. Nice to meet you, sir. Even though they're both admirals. Because this is Admiral Jellico and not Captain Jellico, so that's actually the wrong picture. But that's okay; it's fine. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, they, they they realize oh, there's a there's an incursion, but these ships have no shields. You know, not too worried about it. So, you know, they have a coffee, they chat, they go to the holodeck. Archer gives him a guided tour of the SS Enterprise, the refit, because Jellico always wanted to see that in person and to, to get the tour from the man himself. Sure, it's not the actual one, but then Jellico's like, hey, we actually have the real one. It's in Earth. It's at the museum. So Archer's like, oh. So they take a transport over there, and they actually tour the real one and point out the differences between the real SS Enterprise and, and the, the one that was on the holodeck, because there are a few errors. So. Anyway, there you go. The end. The end. Dun-dun-dun. And yes, Ozzy, 100% need popcorn for these.
So go vote in the poll. You got four minutes, guys, to pick a winner. Which scenario is the best and or least or most crazy? Thanks, people. We got Stuart with Arch Archelico and Sam with Binks. Be our Lord, our God. Go vote. Go vote. <clears throat> oh, Jellico became older all of a sudden. Nice. Yeah, that's perfect. That's the right one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was from yesterday's uh, live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. That's a grumpy looking uh, normal archer. Yes. Um, but yeah. Thousand TIE Fighters. I mean, that could be a problem, I guess, for some scenarios with some ships. But well, people really, gave us the power. They, they buffed us up for this one, so yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, like the... Uh, obviously, I originally had the Corellian Corvette. That would be screwed. Flat out. Like, even I could pick off a few of the TIE Fighters, but... Yeah. I mean, any Star Wars vs. Star Wars tech is a whole different ball game. as soon as you stop putting in shields. But yeah, Earth Space Dock, I mean... It can fire like a thousand torpedoes, you know, literally, but like it can fire yeah. at least a hundred torpedoes in any given salvo. And one torpedo, can, like, just the, just because just the casing is like as long as the TIE fighter. Yeah, the, the ball bit, I mean, for sure. But, yeah, like, yeah. It have to be. So, a lot of firepower. Um, and then DS9, of course, if that's fully, a, what, like 10,000 torpedoes when it was. Um, I get a lot. Hmm. Yeah. It was just crazy, though. I love how you came up to help me out. I appreciate that. But it was very, very confusing for a second. Like, what is happening? You're not supposed to fight me. Well, I killed no. you. I didn't help you because Darth, Darth, Darth Jar is I a know. dick. I know. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna have like Enterprise D come into Earth Space Dock and Defiant Dock and Deep Space Nine and everybody chill. And I'm like, nah, no, I don't want to include yours. Screw you guys. <laughs> Screw you guys. Archer and him. Archer and Jellico need to have some time together. No, oh, that's nice. Yeah, it'll be uh They also debated the the, the importance of four shift rotation versus three. <laughs> well, Archer might say, "I better have people for two shifts." Yeah. Crew so small. Uh, although you got to wonder though, when you're, I mean, sorry, admirals have a tad more free time than captains, or at least stress time. How much of anyone in Trek who has access? Because obviously, if you're most people, most of the universe, you don't have access to a holodeck at whim. But if you're an admiral, you certainly do. There's some local holodeck you can use. Like, how much of your time are you spending meeting people from the past and talking to them and gaining expertise? Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you go meet all the legends? I mean, right now, if you can meet Elvis, a hologram of Elvis, wouldn't you do it? Just to meet him and see what he's like. Yeah. And that's just, and that, and, that, and while famous in their right, you know. Me as a musician would care more about Elvis, so therefore you as a Starfleet higher up would care about the first captain. Um, so at a certain point, they've, like, you could argue, met them all. You know, in the sense of, like, well, we've met so many other people. Um, you know. And Fleet Paw says, right now I've got 5,000 photon torpedoes armed and ready to launch. If you don't believe me, feel free to scan the station. You may test that assumption at your earliest convenience. Yeah. Vote for whoeth. Winner. 30 seconds left. With 10 votes. Guys, come on. More votes, guys. Mm -hmm. 20 of you here. I don't know why we only get so few votes. It's just the poll. I don't know if you, if you guys don't understand me, but that, that's what you're doing. But you go to the poll and vote. It is simple and free. And it's right there. Mm -hmm. Just press the button. That's all you gotta do. It's that easy. Take a look. It's in a book. We're voting on the poll. I don't think people liked mine very much. Not doing so well. I don't know if they didn't like it. I think just, just mine brought two awesome people together to, to hang out and have coffee. Hmm. I should have just said that, you know, since Earth Space Dock and Deep Space Nine were beside each other, the museum was there too. Yeah, when you meant to be, when you meant to have Darth Revan? Yeah, but I think Matthew Lubner's confused. Anyway, regardless, confused. So I stabbed Revan. I remember I was because it wasn't your your things weren't changed yet. So I stabbed Revan. You didn't have Archer yeah. when I was doing my better than that, obviously. Hmm. Oh well, that's okay. That's okay. We'll just leave it 
as is right now because Matthew Lebner got his stuff. So. Mm-hmm. And that's the end of the round. Clean. Uh, you won by a small majority. Seventy-three percent. Twenty-six for Sam. Oh, thank you guys. All right. You so now we're not that into... man. So now we're going into the final. Oh, final round, guys. Yes. Now we've also had now the the, the, the asset. The assertion, the, the assertion that we now can no longer double changes. So if you want to change something, get in there quick because now it's like a bidding war. If you want to change somebody for someone else, that that's your chance. Um, mm-hmm. so it's a whole different game when it comes to changing things. But let's see what the situation is as well because uh, that determines. Uh, yeah. and no, Brett, you didn't mess anything up. It's fine. It's fine. I do quite like when Palpatine. And again, low power ships versus high power ships. Oh, yes. Oh, you're getting popular. Anyway, yes. So, yeah, final. Here we go. Palpatine and whatever bliss on the A4, A472 bio ship with the Jedi Starfighter. Yes, very useful. And Sam, you got Admiral Archer and Admiral Jellico, Deep Space Nine, and Earth Space Dock. And the scenario this time is a time agent has pulled your team into the future aboard the 29th century starship Relativity. They want you all to settle a bet. Which team would win in a dance-off? Awesome. So, you guys have four minutes on the clock now to make any changes to the ships or the people. And it's worth (sighs) noting, there is a dancing doctor in canon. Yeah. And or... It's no. true. Or uh, uh, Brent with his tremendously scary face when he dances, if I recall that episode being correct. <laughs> oh, data, you mean. Don't... When you said Brent, I thought you meant like Brett. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Don't, don't insult Brett. Have you not seen Brett's dancing face? Yes. Smile, data. Yeah. I mean, Actually, it... data's face, not Brett's. Brent's. They were just so good. I, oh, it's just, man. TNG cost was so good. Alright, three minutes left. Ray Rex, 10 pounds. Oh. Change Zora Bliss. Zori Bliss for Beverly Crusher. And change Jellico for Boimler. Ah. Oh! And he can nice. do the choo 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 dance, I'm guessing, at this point in his career. <laughs> you can do whatever you need him to. It's your scenario. There are no rules as far as that goes. So that's two changes. Anyone else? Anyone else? Two minutes and 39 seconds to make any changes. And those two are locked. Those ones that are changing, don't select those ones. <clears throat> tick, tock, tick, tock. Two minutes and 20 seconds left. We've got 40 likes, which is awesome. So thank you guys for hitting that like button. Much appreciated. These uh, Trek versus are always fun. Let us know. Yeah. Like mm. the curveballs. But now, like I say, now things are being locked or not locked. Fascinating. So Boimler and Crusher are locked. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fleet Power, $5. Uh, Papa Palpy to Mariner. So. Go for Papa. Go for Papa Palpy theme. Go for Papa Papa. Oh, yeah. I can't even remember the, the, the skit, man. <clears throat> minute 30. Any more changes? Now's your chance. Put them in. Don't want to leave them until the last minute. Matthew Lebner also came under way under the wire last time. Yes. Um, so that's also, yeah. Um, we did incorporate them, though. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And now Mariner and Crusher will be locked. Ching. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Minute. If any more changes, now's the chance. I love how I just mentioned Daniels in the last scenario. With Admiral Archer, and 
our scenario talks about him bringing this to the future. Change Archer for Ransom, says Ray Rex with five pounds. Oh, so you get Ransom. Nice. <clears throat> I suppose you, uh, which ransom though? <laughs> ransom from Equinox or ransom from Lower Decks? Commander or Finn Captain? Three so as there's many characters. Yeah, I gotta be a little more clear in your changes when it comes to stuff like that. There's only one Darth Jar Jar, but there's just a few ransoms. Oh, Matthew oh, Lever oh. gets in with ten dollars. Change bio ship to the Klingon Death Ship. Okay. Starfish goiter to Enterprise refit. Okay. Starship goiter. What the hell is what is happening? What is the Starship goiter? Goddard. Uh. Well, goiter. G O T E R. That's not even on the board, so I don't know what we're supposed to be changing. That will do. What's a Klingon death ship as well? I don't even know. Because the Goddard is the is the um, Scotty shuttle. As far as yes. I can recall. Changes are over, by the way. Um, oh. So okay, so the species A four seven two ship to the Klingon death ship. I don't know what that one is. And which ship do you want changed to the refit, Matthew? Just let us know. Pipa says, translation, Klingon death ship to starfighter and starfighter. What? That's not a good translation. Klingon death ship and starfighter to Enterprise refit. Oh, starfish is supposed to be starfighter, I guess. Brett, do whatever you want. <laughs> whatever you can translate out of that, because... So I assume the death ship is the sarcophagus ship. Yeah, that would make sense, sure. Sorry, Matthew, I just don't understand what you're saying. I guess if you're trying to rush in... Uh, start typing earlier. <sighs> yeah. Uh, dance off, okay. And I go first for this one, unfortunately. Starfighter. Okay. Yeah, so the Enterprise refit is where the Starfighter is now. So. Yes. So I have the same ships, but everything else on the board has been bamoosed. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Fun. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. And tomorrow, Stuart, what are we doing? <sighs> TNG Season 5, Episode 20, Cost of Living. Ha! Didn't forget about that. He got it. Um, he knew it. He was there. It's the review. So tune in, guys. Should be boring. <laughs> but we'll try to make it fun. Dun, dun, dun. So working need a minute here. Um, 41 likes, awesome. If you haven't hit like yet, give that like button a tap though. Let's see how high we can get that. 45 would be awesome. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Eagle Moss ship, nonetheless. So it can't even fit inside it. What is this, a starship for ants? Yeah. Okay. Says that the one from the show was too dark to use. Of course it was. Gosh, we have a trifecta of Odexians. That's cute. Yeah. All right. All right. Have fun. Two minutes on the clock. Two minutes, not four minutes. <laughs> I couldn't talk for four minutes about a dance competition. All right. So we're in the future. The Dancing Doctor and Mariner. I mean, two of the most fun-loving, you know, Starfleet officers in history. Daniels wants to see, or, or a time agent wants to see uh, them, see who would win. Uh, the ships are kind of irrelevant at this point, so I don't know what to tell you. Um, 
anyway, dancing doctor. That's what she does. She's a good dancer. Uh, whips out a few different f- forms of dance for this. Mariner, of course, is just having a good old time because Mariner. She's also had a few drinks. She's a little tipsy. Sure, she she replicates a sarcophagus ship and an Enterprise refit, but the Eagle Moss versions, and uh, is flying them around as she's dancing. It's the this one doesn't exist. This one loves the best. That's one of her. That's one of her dances. Uh, dancing doctors like doing tap dancing around her. Just they're they're, they're killing it. They're killing it. Um, and they know that Commander Ransom and Boimler, of course, you know, they'll 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 they'll, they'll dance. But I don't think that the they get the technical points that the dancing doctor would get necessarily. Mariner, she's not really a technical dancer either, but she she's doing the choo choo just like Boimler will be doing. Uh, and Commander Ransom, we're not a hundred percent sure how well of a dancer, how good of a dancer he is. Um, but you know, of course, we're going to win. We got we got our Eagle Moss ships, and, and Mariner's doing her fly around thing. She's 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 channeling her inner Sam with the whooshes and the. Sh- Remember when we used to do that? You did it on you did it on the Tholian one last night, like Tholian ship. <laughs> That's what I did. Anyway, but yes, so the dancing doctor and Boimler they they get a lot of technical points because Beverly is fantastic with all forms of dance, and uh, I don't know who wins necessarily. That's kind of up to you guys at the end. Nailed it. Yeah. Okay, I have some things already, so... uh... Did you know, Stuart, that Ransom is a ballet dancer in the Academy? I wouldn't be surprised. Exactly. And Boyman is very enthusiastic. He chews, chews, and chews, and even even try and do four chews if he can so try. So they'll be... I think you muted yourself. And those quirky guys over there... On relativity, I like. Well, hey guys, uh, you know you both came from a starship for some reason, different ships, and different eras. We've transmogrified those designed to, into clothing for you to wear. So Boimler is given this like, uh, you know, clever mechanical thing with pillars and pylons. So he's a he's got and a um, ransom has like a like a, a corset with some those you know, the, the spherical things on the sides. They now they are representing their respective um, things and they're dancing and then of course. Marin and Crusher are being bored, and they're like, what the hell is going on here? Marin's like, Boims, what are you doing? He's like, I'm trying to five chew! She's like, Shaka. And she's handed the sarcophagus, which is like, what the fuck is this? And Beverly's handed the refit, and she's like, oh, this is great. So they start dancing, having a great time. But as you say, Crusher's so technical, she's doing her own thing, and Marin is so chaotic, she's doing her own thing. But Ransom is focused in, his ballet days. All he sees is ballet. All he sees is, is ballet dancing with Boothby, which they would do sometimes uh, on the on the grounds. He's Boothby dancing, and Boimler also knows Boothby. Everyone knows Boothby, and so he's, he zones in. He remembers when he did um, you know, jazz. He did jazz dancing, which is a thing in the future. He's freestyle jazz. He's in the zone and becomes a ballet jazz dance with space station costumes and Ransom, as in the, the time Ransom, um, and Duquesne are eating popcorn thing. What the fuck? We were crazy in the past. Like, we, thank goodness we evolved into sane time agents that don't ever try and kill the past. Because these guys be crazy. But you know what? They decide the boys win, space stations win, and for their prize, they get one time travel trip, and Boimler goes to fix a, a, a grape harvest, raisin harvest, I think it was terrible, and Ransom goes to win a competition uh, bodybuilding from two weeks ago. Very uncreative thinking, because they're them. Nice. It's very nice. I like the, the, the award at the end there. Yeah. All right, guys. Four minutes on the clock. You guys get to vote for the final. Vote in the final. Who won this dance competition? Not who won the scenario. Who won the dance competition? It's up to you guys. Go vote. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, Sam, Lower Decks, or Stuart, Ladies Dance. There you go. <clears throat> Yeah, I could totally see Ransom being a ballet dancer, damn it. Mm-hmm. All right. We were just awaiting for that. Man. You guys have the power. We are now hands off. You know, this is it. Yeah, Astra, um, we started with 
Bashinik, Bashinik, and Cricket. We have not got those anymore. Uh, you know, if you had told us, Stuart, at the start of this, it would end this with a time dance competition between the ladies of, of Trek and, and the man of Blood X, we would not be surprised. <laughs> nope. Not at all, actually. It's what this show's great at. It's just being crazy and out of the out of left field. So. But I incorporated the stations, so I feel pretty proud of that. Um, I incorporated the ships in the form oh. of Eagle Moss ships. Mm -hmm. Replicated, just saying. Mm-hmm. Computer replicate Eagle Moss ship. What? <laughs> you totally do it. The fat one in gold. Ah. Vote now, guys! I mean, come on. We want all the votes. All the votes. All the votes. Mm -hmm. And don't worry, Matthew. I was just making sure you knew the correct term. Uh, that's what we do here. The Trek Yards is about learning about ships. So I thought I'd put in a little bit of ship knowledge there. So... Yes, yes, and of course the actual picture of the sarcophagus ship from the show is too dark because guess what? Season one of Discovery, just too dark. Not only in tone, but in visuals because Discovery. Dun dun dun. <laughs> All right, less than two minutes left, guys, to vote. We have 11 votes. Can we get more votes in the voting pool? 13 of you here, though, so yeah, we're almost at the, the limit of what who can vote now, so. But if you haven't voted in the poll, please do so. Like right now. Yeah, like right now. Like like this second. We're waiting. We're waiting. Tick tock, motherfuckers. You must you must vote. Because discovery is is the tagline, yeah. It's the show's tagline, yep. Use the vote. Use the vote. Luke, use the vote. Who's the vote, Luke? <laughs> Fifteen people, twelve votes. Mm. Go vote for your favorites. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Fleet Paw's even sharing the sarcophagus ship analysis from us. Oh, Thank you, yeah. Fleet Paw. What a lovely vessel that is. It's amazing how many videos are done, and, 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 and I like it because it's all of the time, all those breakdowns. Mm -hmm. But I hope we still had. It never appeared again in track. 30 seconds left, guys, to vote. Please go do so. Must become one with the vote. <laughs> Although, I just realized, no Star Wars anything made it through. Yeah, fuck Star Wars. Pathetic. That's kind of fun. That's kind of funny. You you guys chose. You didn't. You, there's no curveballs. You could have. I mean, if you'd given one of us a Jedi, we could have ele elevated, elevated, levitated. General Grievous must have been driving because he couldn't. He couldn't super chat into votes anything Star Wars. All right, time is up, guys. So we will end this poll. Boom. Super close once again. Who even won? Us. Uh, Oh, I did with fifty-three percent, barely. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the dancing doctor, dancing doctor did what the dancing doctor does. The, That's like say that five times fast. The double D was your help. She ain't that big, but yeah. Little. What? Uh, uh. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go, guys. The winner. Dr. Well done. Good job. Dun, dun, dun. All right. There we go. Thank you guys for joining us for this episode of Trek Versus. Like Sam said, tune in tomorrow for our Trek TNG review. Mm -hmm. And we will uh, catch you guys this Saturday, of course. we got our regular uh, content coming out. And then next week, more lives. And like I said, Money Fan Film comes this week. And on Saturday yes. at some yeah. point. Tune in for that. It's DS9 themed, and DS9 is very rare in the Trek fan film. We're just you know any show community, so tune in for that. Share it. We'd appreciate any any sharing um, because it does genuinely make a difference. So thank you in advance. Right. Have to share. So until next time, he is Commander Cockings. And he is Captain Foley. Bye guys. Oh wait, hold on. There's a thumbnail. So we started with Stargazer. Death Star 2, Evil Picard, Darados? No, Grievous. <laughs>
Kaduku and uh, Vok. That was a... Long O came from that. Good job. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs>